Shadow Run story time 14.5 begin. It was another day and a half before Mr. Johnson contacted the team. Wildcard spent most of his off day online in his dinghy apartment, buying up second hand agents for his nexus with his share of the dough. On a whim, he called up his old partner Belfast, to see if he was in town. The Irish bank robber was in the cast when Wildcard called, but he promised that they could hang after a big job I've got planned in the tier round February. Geppetto chilled with his Black Lodge buddies until he woke up from adversary mode naked next to the teenage vampire, whereupon he decided that he valued his independence and snuck back to Tacoma. Bend went to the movies with Emily, but found himself still a little conflicted about their age difference in the free love nature of their relationship. He decided to put this out of his mind by turning into a seagull and going out for a fly, relishing the last autumn winds of September. Dervish sparred with Sensei, having not had much time to hang around their baron's shithole of late. Sensei had recently received a very irate call from Mariella, so he was in a foul mood, perfect for fighting. Everyone was generally in good spirits when the team got the call from Johnson. Dante's inferno, gentlemen, I'll see you at 10pm. About a minute later, Geppetto sent out a group message that was only one word long. What? Dante's Inferno on 5th and Madison, you see, was the single most expensive nightclub in all of Seattle. Nine stories deep and constituting each of the seven deadly sins in addition to the exclusive purgatory and super exclusive hell levels, the excesses of its clientele were infamous. Many an illegal deed took place behind closed doors wrought in gold at Dante's Inferno. The fact that Mr. Johnson had managed a room so easily in such a short time frame spoke volumes of his importance. Devish was the first to note the obvious implications. Fucking triple A, man. Realizing that the team's current look wasn't going to cut it, Geppetto hastily called up an old friend. Damien Bradford Nice's cavalier voice sounded at the other end. I was wondering when you'd call. You know, security director McWilliams and I still try to keep in touch. Sorry, Bradford. I've got no time for chit chat. I need the best four designer suits in the entire Seattle Metroplex. On short notice. Nice chuckled, gotten yourself into a higher tear of jobs, Geppetto? Good for you, you always struck me as a good earner, even when you were hiding away in warehouse management, the suits, Bradford, Techie, Techie, you're looking for Armente in Bellevue, it's his a subsidiary, very flash, I'll take your word on it, thanks, Bradford, don't be a stranger, after blowing nearly 6 grand, the team had their suits. Each team member had a perfectly fitted white tuxedo over a red shirt, with a minor accent for each. Geppetto fibers in booty and cuffs interspersed with awakened plant fibers to give off sinister, hellish patterns in astral space. Dervish entire suit interwoven with Kevlar and given a delta amyloid coating. Slight metallic sheen, just subtle enough for a Johnson to take note. Mod X loafers designed to show off Dervish's skimmer discs. Ben tuxedo given partial ruthenium polymer coating, for light transparency. Wildcard are overlays on the shoes and gloves give the appearance of motion blur and trailing flames. As the team stepped past the board, Tattooed bounces with jet black sibaries and into the stunningly massive strip club that was last. Following the iron catwalks that crisscrossed over the veritable sea of flesh and led to the elevator, all eyes turned to them. This was officially the big leagues. As the glass elevator descended, the team witnessed a panoply of sin, brothels, ludicrously expensive dining, dealers in artifacts and rare weapons, drug dens, gladiatorial arenas, BTL labs, and even, counterintuitively, live theater. They were led through the theater of the pride level to a back room, perfectly soundproof. Although the room was small and circular, with just enough room for the Johnson, his desk, and the four shadow runners. The entirety of the room's surfaces were comprised of holographic tradia screens, giving the meeting the appearance of happening in the depths of space. Gentlemen, said the same Johnson as before, sit down, please, and order whatever you want. Four AR menus popped up in front of the team, primarily featuring food in ridiculous portions and prices from gluttony. Geppetto's eyes lit up at one of the options on the last page, though, which had pictures of metahumans. Johnson grinned. I did mean it when I said whatever you want, Geppetto. But don't kill your order, the staff tends to frown on that sort of behavior. Nodding with a slight tinge of embarrassment, Geppetto chose an attractive young elf woman to be his meal, but clarified on the order that he'd be eating later. No sense in sullying the Johnson meat, this is a little out of our price range, Mr. Johnson. No worries, Geppetto. Tonight is on me, the team exchanged looks. So, shall we get down to business? Geppetto smiled ear to ear, nervous but ecstatic. 
Yes, that would be ideal. Mr. Johnson. Johnson put up an image a youthful looking Asian dwarf, her hair up in a bun, in a lab coat. She stood aside many other scientists, a company photo, most likely. I need you to do an employee extraction, from Universal Omnitech. Do you want to hear more? Geppetto's eyes widened and he nodded wordlessly. UO was the biggest biotechnology firm in the AAs. The only thing keeping it from the tear of Evo Biomedical was a seat on the corporate court, and it actively competed with AS technology in fragmented markets across the globe. This was not going to be an easy extraction, but it would have an astronomical payout. The woman is Dr. Jennifer Chang. She contacted my employer over what she believes to be unfair employee relations at the Universal Omnitech Home Complex in Vancouver. My employer agreed to hire her under the condition that she could cooperate with an armed extraction. That armed extraction is U4. Bend couldn't help a small gulp. I'm offering you 80,000 yuan. On his game, Geppetto responded. You'll have to double that, Mr. Johnson, if you want us to run against the world's second largest biotech firm on their home turf. Johnson rested his chin on the palms of his hands, amused. I've overpaid you once already. I can go up to 100,000 but after that it's over my budget. Geppetto stood fast. 100,000 but we get a 20,000 new yen expense account, and the ability to negotiate for more if mission expenses prove to be untenable. Johnson pressed a hand to the side of his head, interfacing with an internal comlink. After a few moments, he relented. Yes, that is acceptable. 100,000 with a 20,000 expense account, you have a deadline of a week. Understand that failure will not be tolerated. Geppetto stood to shook Johnson's hand. Understood. Johnson accepted the handshake and smiled at Geppetto. His grin brought to mind a lurking shark. Well then, gentlemen, I'll give you the rest of the night to indulge yourselves before the job begins in earnest. I'll send you the full dossier of information post haste. The team were left in Seattle's most expensive illicit nightclub, with a blank check to do whatever the fuck they wanted. So, said Geppetto, as the Johnson stood and took his leave, I believe that I'm going to stay in pride. I'm going to envy, noted Wildcard. I could use a little escapism, cause if anything's going to kill me, it'll be this job. Roth, said Dervish. I always wanted to see if Fight Club stood up in practice. I, I need a little while to think, said Ben, face pale. He ended up in lust. Geppetto spent most of the night meeting and greeting various minor celebrities, watching theater performances, and sampling a few souls along the way. Devish spent the night beating the shit out of wannabe street sammies in a blood-stained arena. When Wildcard stumbled in with a non-filtered persona fixed chip in the back of his head, screaming about independence from the British and swinging a sword around, Devish had to put down William Wallace to the cheers of the crowd. Bend, for his part, woke up the next morning on a heart-shaped bed, naked but for his goggles, surrounded by no less than eight prostitutes. With a resigned sigh, Bend rubbed the back of his head and admitted, I may have strayed from the path a little. Shadow Run Story Time 14.5 N quite like this one now although yeah it's it's a pure setup and it's it's possibly one of the shortest ones but uh no i really enjoyed the idea of like you know with dante's inferno nightclub i like i really enjoyed that with the different levels and all that i thought that was really cool and uh like i just thought this was a really nice setup like you know it it it, it, it expands the shadowgun universe which i really enjoy um I'm more of a fan of like the Shadowgun set than anything else. I just think it's a really interesting set that hasn't been expanded upon enough in like, you know, just like you know the closest thing we've got to that was that movie Bright, you know, and it's just like you know, I really enjoy like you know a near future, um, with like elves and orcs and all that other good shit, and I don't know I just love the technology and all that like you know I'm, I'm just really looking forward to that cyberpunk 77 like you know i can't wait for that fucking game so uh look i don't know that's just me but next part will be out tomorrow because hey it's shot on a week here on neckbeard here so uh, none of this hanging about for a week or two gonna be out tomorrow hope you guys look forward to it I'm looking forward to it. Well, I won't be looking forward to it because I've done this about a week ago. I'm away in Poland. Yeah. All right. Um, talk to you boys later. I'm just gambling at this point. Hope you enjoy it. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. Just stop. Just stop it. Stop. No. Just stop it. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay?
No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop! <laughs>